welcome to Retro Planner Co. I'm Cheryl. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial um, for the text tool in GoodNotes 6 for digital planning. First, I wanted to real quick cover one of the biggest mistakes I see brand new digital planners making um, when trying to add text to their digital planner is thinking that this little keyboard is your text tool. It is not. This is a full page note taking slash journaling tool. So if you are wanting to get smaller sections of text in your digital planner, this is not the tool for you. I'm not going to go to get into this tool very much other than to say if you tap on it, you're given a full text um, typing box. And if you tap, your keyboard is brought up and then you can just start typing. You can change your headings and all of that. So this is similar to a word processing kind of program and it's really good for like I said note taking as well as journaling but that is not the subject of today's video today we are going to be covering the text tool so I'm going to click on my little edit tool up here and here is the text tool right here when you click on your text tool you're given a whole nother menu of options for the text tool if you just double tap on it or tap on it again you'll see that the only customizing option you have is to save your current text font settings as your default. So I'm going to briefly walk you through the text settings. The first setting is your fonts. If you're brand new to GoodNotes 6, you will not, of course, see all these fonts. These are fonts that I have added in, which I will do a whole nother video on that. But you will have a list of default fonts. Verdana should be in there, I believe, um, which is on the list here. So your list of fonts is going to be much smaller. Your recents will show up up top and you can search if you know the font name, you can search for it in the search bar. The next setting is font sizing, which you can change before you start typing or after and I'll show you that. And then you have your formatting. You can left align, center align, right align or change your line spacing. We'll go over that in just a minute. Next, you have your text box style. So this would be like a background box that shows up behind your text. And then finally, your text styling, which is the same as if you just tapped on your tool, your text tool, you can save your current text styles as the default. So first I'm going to cover just the tap and type features of the text tool and a few different ways to change your text. And then I'm going to get into the scribble feature, which is tapping and writing and having your handwriting turn into text. So when you're on your text tool, if you just tap you are given your text box and your keyboard will automatically pop up. If for some reason your keyboard is small, like this, when it is small, you can just kind of move it around so it's not in your way. But if you want it to be large, take two fingers, zoom out, and it is enlarged. Again, to make it small, you would just do that in reverse, two fingers. Sometimes you type and that's okay. You can just hit backspace and take those off. So when you have your text box, once you start typing, notice, because my text box was kind of small, it's not like expanding for my text. So you can just take your finger. I don't recommend using your pen because if scribble is on, you'll start marking things and it's very annoying. Drag these little side nodes out to shorten or lengthen your text box. And then you can continue typing. and then just tap off to close it out. So if you've typed text and you want to say change the color, change the sizing, change the font, copy paste, I'll show you how to do all of that right now. First for copy and paste, if you're on your text tool, just tap on the box. You can click copy, tap off, long press, paste and then it will paste it in the same formatting that you had it in to begin with. So this is good for like multiple text boxes or if you wanna line them up and you don't want it all to be in one text box. You can also tap on it to select everything in the box, tap again, actually tap twice, and you have your little selection box and you can drag the note out to as many of the words that you want to select. When you've selected your text, you can cut, copy, paste, 
You can link, which I'll cover in another video. Formatting, you can, if the font allows it, you can choose bold or italic. Um, otherwise, you can underline it here. And to take that off, you would just hit undo. When you have your text selected, you can also choose change your font. So you would just tap on any font and say this came up like way too big for what you wanted. It's still selected, so you can tap on your sizing and adjust the sizing this way. But there's also an easier way to adjust the sizing, in my opinion. I'm going to tap on this and move it down. I like to adjust the sizing using the lasso tool. So you tap on the lasso, make sure text boxes is on. And then now the lasso tool now has this rectangular feature that you can select. And then it'll just let you kind of drag, which to change the sizing, you don't need to necessarily do that. You can just use your free form, tap. And then here you can click resize. This is my preferred way to resize text because it allows you to be a bit more precise with um, the size of your text. Also, it's a really quick way to turn your text because it'll kind of snap it into place. So if you want to like label your days or whatever along the side, that is how you would do that using the lasso tool. So back to the text tool. To change the color of your text, just tap on it when you're on the text tool. And these are your color options here. And unfortunately they are, they don't sync with the pen and the highlighter tool. So if you've added colors in with that, you would have to add it again here. You'll notice, see my uh, presets are different here than they are for my pen tool. And that's something I really hope GoodNotes changes in the future, if you're listening, GoodNotes. Um, so when you're on the text tool, just tap in the text box, click on your colors. These are presets that I've added in, but you would go to custom, and then you have the whole grid that you can choose from. If you tap on this little color wheel, you have your wheel. You can add in hex codes if you want to, and then to add it to your uh, library, just click on add to presets. So let me go ahead and click here. When you're on the box, it'll change the whole entire, all of the font in that box. And then you can just click add to presets and it'll add it right there for you. So you can use it again in the future. You can also use the color picker tool to change the color of your fonts. So if you have stickers on your page that, and you want to match the color of those stickers, when you're on your text tool, click on your colors, click on custom color picker, and then you can just drag it around to the color that you want, let go, and then it's right there for you with the hex code. If you want to add it to your library, just click add to presets. So when you're on the text tool, just tap on your text box, tap on your color, and change it there. Sometimes it's picky and it doesn't let you um, change it and you might have to highlight the text and change it that way. But usually if you're on your text tool and you select a text box, you can change the color quickly. Uh, also, if you wanna just change the color and you're not on the text tool, you can just click your lasso tool, make sure text boxes is on, lasso, tap, and then you can change color here as well. If you want to change just one or two like colors of one or two words, then just tap in the text box, double tap to select, drag out your node, and then you can just change whatever color you want there. You can also, um, when you tap on a text box, if you want to change your font, um, sometimes it doesn't work where if you just tap on the box, and you want to change the font, it worked this time. Sometimes it doesn't. You might have to highlight it to change it. But while you're selected on the box, you can change the sizing and everything here. You can also change the formatting and line spacing of your typed text. Say you have a list that you've typed out and you have some bullets that you want to match the spacing. You don't have to type a separate text box and line them all up that way. Just take your text box when you're on the text tool, tap on it, click on the formatting up here, and then you can center align, you can right align, you can left align, and then here is where you would change your spacing. So you just kind of drag it to where it maybe looks good. You can see I need to do a little bit more, so I'm going to go back in and space it out a little bit more. And line it up that way. So I did the same thing for this list. But you'll notice that the font I chose and the um, font size kind of matched my list perfectly. So that didn't kind of work out the way I wanted it to. But let's say this was a little bit bigger. 
and it's not matching my lines. So if I wanna to try to get this to match my lines, I would just tap on my box, tap on my spacing, and then I could just kind of space it out that way. If it's too big, you can adjust your font size and then line it up. One thing I wanted to cover real quickly too, if you have a bunch of stickers on your page, um, normally I like to kind of tap in a blank spot and add text that way, but if you have a bunch of stickers on your page, you really can't do that. And you'll notice I'm on the text tool and I'm tapping, I wanna add text on top of this list. I don't wanna add it anywhere else on the page and then drag it over, I just wanna add it to my list. It's not letting me do that. So a quick hack workaround I have for that is to go up to these three dots in the top right corner, scroll down to document editing, and then go to image, text box, and equation, and turn that off. I usually leave this off because it's just annoying and it gets in my way. What this does, it'll swap you back and forth to the tool that it thinks you want to use. So in that case where I was trying to add my text, it just automatically swapped me over to the selection tool and kept selecting my, you know, my image and my sticker and I didn't want that. So now I'm on my text tool and I wanna to add text directly to my sticker. I tap and there it is and I can just start typing. And then I can also easily tap it, select it, move it around, however I wanna do that. Next is text boxes. So if you have some text that you've already typed, you can just tap on it. This middle section here is your text box. I do have a whole nother video on text boxes, so I'm not gonna get into it in, in great detail right now, but you can just kind of tap on your different style that you wanna use, and it'll add that border background behind your box. You can drag it in to make it smaller. And then from here with it selected, you can tap on advanced, and then you can change your background color Again, hex codes, color wheel. Um, you cannot use the color dropper for this, so you have to use that in a different tool like your pen tool. Find the hex code and then enter it here. And then you can also add a border color. And notice it's not showing my border because I need to go to the border points and increase that. You can also round your corners. You can add a drop shadow, take off the drop shadow, or you can add padding, which is the space between like the outside of your box and your text. You can add padding there. Again, I have an old other video on this that I will link to because this is a lot of fun to use for various things. Um, I will link to that in the description. Another thing you can do is link text. So say I just kind of made a button here. Um, I can just triple tap in on the text, highlight it, and then click link. And I do have a whole other video on this as well, so I'm not going to deep dive into this. But you can basically link it to a website, external website, or a document, um, a page in your current document, or another document, a page in another document that you have saved in GoodNotes. And then whenever something is linked, it'll add this dashed line to the bottom of it to show that it is linked. Now let's get into the scribble feature. It is a really fun feature um, of Apple, and you can use it in, in other apps, not just GoodNote 6, where you just kind of tap, write what you want, and it'll change it into your preferred font. However, a lot of people don't mention this in their tutorial, so I'm going to. You need to make sure your scrib scribble feature for your Apple Pencil is turned on. So to do that, go to your settings, and then go down to Apple Pencil. I think it's usually set on by default, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's been a while since I've set up my iPad, obviously, but you'll want to make sure your scribble is toggled on. Then you can also um, set up a couple quick shortcuts as well for your Apple Pencil in here. So once that is on, you can use it in GoodNotes 6. When you're on your text tool, just tap like you would to go to type but instead of typing, and unfortunately it brings up your keyboard, so I'm just gonna make that small and get it out of my way. And then you can just start writing. And this time it actually did everything correctly. My handwriting is quite sloppy, so what I have found is sometimes I have to go in and change it. Um, so to do that, I would just tap in the box, make sure your cursor's there, 
Now you can just drag your pencil through whatever text you want to change. If you wanted to change something or if you wanted to copy it, it or if you wanted to look it up, um, if you want to change the color, this selects it the same as if you double tapped and then drug your um, and then drug the box out. You can just, I'll do that again, tap in your box. Again, if you just tap the box and there's no cursor and you try to use your pencil, it's not gonna do it. So what you would need to do is tap to where there's a cursor in your box, your keyboard pops up, and then you can highlight everything. And so from here, you can change your font, super easy. You can change your sizing. If you wanted to do that, you could drag out your text box. You can, while it's highlighted, just change everything. So if you've written something and it uh, pulled up the wrong spelling or it pulled up the wrong word, because it's not always great at recognizing sloppy handwriting like mine, um, then you can just kind of draw a line through it and you can and it puts a space in there. So another thing you can do, um, if say there's a space and you don't want that space, tap it on your box, put in your cursor, and then of course you could just tap and then backspace and do it that way. But a shortcut with your scribble feature is just to draw a line and it will take that space out. If you draw another line, it will add a space. So it only does one space. So it'll either take one space away or add a space. So finally, I'm going to cover converting handwriting to text. I have covered this in another video um, when I did the video, I believe, on the pen tool. But I'm going to go ahead and cover it here as well. So if I've written something out and I want to change this to my chosen font, then what I can do is just tap on the lasso tool, make sure handwriting is on. And this is um, where this rectangular selection tool now for lasso comes in handy because you want to make sure you get all of this in the box. So just lasso it all, tap it, and then you're going to click this extender, convert, text. This time it pulled in my handwriting the right way. Sometimes it'll pull it in with misspellings or whatever, so you just want to tap and then you could just type it to fix it. Do not tap out of this box because it's just going to close it out. So what you would need to do, um, you can minimize, like if your keyboard is large, you can just minimize it down on the bottom. If you click convert here, it automatically converts it. Let me switch over to my text. Automatically converts it to Helvetica New, which is like the default. So you could change it from here with the box selected. You could change it and change the sizing. But if you want it automatically to convert it to your default font, then what you would need to do, I'm going to go back to the lasso, rectangle, um, lasso, or select all my text, tap on it, the extender, convert, text. So I'm going to do copy text, close out of the box, long press, and paste. And so now it has converted the text into my default font. With the text box selected, I can just highlight everything and I can change my colors and I can change all the um, text formats from there. I hope this video has been helpful to get you started on using the text tool and the scribble feature in GoodNote 6. Stay tuned, I'll have a lot more videos to come on different hacks, tips, tricks, tutorials for using GoodNote 6 for digital planning. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.